Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark, a high school art teacher, and today I'm excited to bring you a new series dedicated to getting artist advice straight from professional artists. I give you Artist Wise. I'm Miss Lark, and hello to all the students. My name is Josh, aka Baghead. That's my artist name. And it's a privilege to share with you guys some of my experience and some of my techniques as, as to how I do what I do every single day. You know, for me, I didn't just wake up one day and start painting on a wall. It took a lot of time and a lot of preparation. So I'll give you a brief history of where I came from. Uh, hopefully a lot of you out there will take something from this and be able to apply it today, tomorrow, or in the future. I've been drawing ever since I was a kid, ever since I picked up a crayon pretty much. I was drawing on paper, I was drawing on walls, which is probably where a lot of my murals came from. But anyways, I've been drawing ever since I can remember. And I also remember growing up, after school, I'd watch this artist named Mark Kistler draw on TV for an hour a day and you would follow him step by step. And that's where I learned a lot about symmetry and uh, proportions and perspective and you know, those basic drawing lessons. So I take that with me still till this day. After that, I actually got involved in uh, theater. In high school, I was thespian president. I went on a lot of trips for, for theater. And I also was part of a class called Stagecraft, where you learn how to use power tools to build sets. And lesson number one that I will say that has happened to me is don't take anything for granted. Meaning, maybe you're taking a class, maybe you're doing something that you think is irrelevant to what you want to do, but you never know when you're going to use it again. You see, for me, because of Stagecraft, and learning how to use those tools. You know, I attribute my success in making what I make today, today to those classes. Uh, if you've gotten a chance to look at my Instagram, you'll notice that most of my work, if not all of it, is on wood. So thank you to my stagecraft teacher for teaching me that. And don't take those moments for granted. So after high school, I did a little bit of college and went into theater. But then I got kind of felt like that wasn't really my thing. I've always been skateboarding, even uh, in high school and after college. So I started to work at a skate shop. And at one point, I actually broke my ankle. When I broke my ankle, I had to keep my leg elevated for about three months. And that's when I started to pick up my paper and pen again and started to draw and draw and draw, just like when I was a kid, drawing with Mark Kistler on TV. So in spite of an accident, I was able to take a bad situation and make it a better one, an inspiring one. When I got back to work at the skate shop, I actually met another artist who ended up being my mentor for five years. So another tip, tip number two, is mentorship. I feel like uh, we lack a lot of you know, one-on-one -on -one interaction nowadays, especially with social media. So if you can find someone that you trust, maybe locally, that you can maybe just follow around and see how they do things that allow you to do that. Or you can formally ask them, hey, I'd love to spend some time to learn from you. You know, you don't have to pay me. I just want to get experience from you. You know, a lot of artists, you know, they'll be kind of, most of them I feel like will be willing to do something like that. You know, and, and if you can't get in contact or find someone locally, you know, go online. Uh, go on YouTube. You guys use your tools. You know, I I love Barry McGee. He's a contemporary artist, illustrator, and I've looked at every single YouTube video of him. And that's a way to kind of stay connected and have a mentor, even though they don't know that they are to me. So after this time, recently I've been on my own. I've been on my own, uh, but I've been lucky enough with a lot of work and a lot of years to start to work with galleries, be able to travel and paint murals in Puerto Rico, Colorado. I did a job in Germany with Adidas headquarters 
which was beyond my wildest dreams. And that was because I had shown during Miami Art Week and a representative had seen my work. So you never know who's looking. That's some, another tip that I'll tell you. It's tip number three is like, always be on your toes when it comes to art, you know? I, I don't think I was, ex I was expecting anything to be real. I just put out a piece of work and luckily the right person, the right time saw it and I got an opportunity. So make work every single day if you can. Even if it's not something you're proud of, as long as you're moving that hand or stroking that brush, you know, it's repetition, it's repetition, it's repetition, you know. So I do want to kind of take a step back and to kind of just focus on my creative process as to how I make what I make. Um, depending on the client or depending on the project or depending on the gallery or whatever the project is, you know, I do a lot of research first. I get really nerdy and I go online and I look in books and I do research, research, research. Right now I'm really into uh, Native American history and artwork and also into like Aztec and Inca sculptures and all these symbolisms behind them. So I do research and I even print out images as reference and put them up on my walls so that I can see them. Even if I'm not looking at them, I know they're there and it'll subconsciously inspire me sometimes, right? After that, I probably start to write down some ideas so I can see what my ideas are. I also start to loosely sketch what I want to happen. And then maybe I'll go more into the refining and the details. Something that I learned, I forgot who taught me this, but something that applies to me and maybe is going to be uh, something, uh, some sort of a revelation to you as it was to me is that for me, my first thought, my first idea is usually not my best. And I know that a lot of people will teach you that maybe your first idea is your best because it comes from your gut. And that's true. But for me, what I like to do with my artwork is that I like to push it a little bit more. And what I mean by that is like, I can have an idea, kind of like a lemon, right? And I squeeze the lemon and I get some juice. But you know how you can keep squeezing it and keep squeezing it and get some more and get some more? That's what I do with my drawings. So I'll draw my first idea, I'll put a transparency over it, and then I draw over that and just deconstruct or take the main shapes of the image and then get another transparency and do that and so on and move stuff around. Uh, I also use the iPad, which is great because now I don't have to actually use all these papers and waste be wasteful. I use my iPad instead and create layers on the app and just draw and draw and draw and draw. So that's something that's been really big on my artwork is that I usually don't go with my first gut instinct. I let it marinate, I add on, I take away, I go over it again, and so on and so forth. And once I start to execute and, and get into it, you know, things are gonna happen. There's gonna be variables in there that you can't expect. For example, a mural, maybe it's gonna rain, and paint's gonna drip and you're not gonna be able to work around it. There's been times where maybe I've been cutting some wood with a jigsaw and I go a little too much and I cut the wrong thing or I cut it in a weird way. But this is another pro tip that I've learned over time, which is called happy mistakes. And you might have heard of this. That's where maybe a plan doesn't go exactly how you wanted, wanted it to, right? Take that moment or take that mistake and turn it into a positive. Make it intentional, right? I've been able to use those mistakes and actually be like, wow, like, I like this a lot more like this, right? So think about that, you know? Uh, there, there's never gonna be a perfect straight line or a perfect straight circle as hard as you can try, you know? It's, you're gonna drive yourself nuts, you know? So think about leaving room for error, you know? I don't mean make errors intentionally, I mean, just embrace those moments, breathe, and just take it in, right? So, you know, after that, hopefully after less mistakes, my piece is looking pretty much done. You know, I varnish it, and that's my creative process for the most part, you know? I personally 
always look at my older pieces and I'm not a big fan of them sometimes, but I've come a long way from my first piece to now. And I just continue to try to build on uh, the last piece. You know, if I did this, let me try that. And if I try that, let me add some of the old stuff that I used to do and put it together. And that takes time. Finding my style, finding my voice took a very long time, you know. And finally, I feel like I figured out what I want to do, what I want to say. You know, things like what you see behind me is like the mural, which by the way isn't finished. I'm very OCD when it comes to the line work, so give me give me some time and it'll, it'll look really nice. But uh, like the work behind me, for example, the ducks. The ducks to me are a symbol for my childhood, my teenage years, uh, being loose, being free. When you see a duck, they're kind of silly, right? That's kind of the emotion that I'm evoking whenever you see a duck in my painting. And that took some time of figuring it out. Why do I do ducks? Why do I call myself Baghead? And I'll give you a quick story. In high school, everyone was getting a name. Everyone was either, you know, this or that and this, and they were writing certain names, artist names. And, you know, I don't know why I just put bag and head together, but at that time, I think I was thinking, if I'm going to be an artist, I don't want the art to be focused on who I am as Joshua and my personality, be like this social media type of person. It was more about, if you see my artwork and you like it or you don't like it, you can connect with it or you can't, that's what it should be all about. You know, it should be about the artwork and that's why I stuck with Baghead and that's where it came from. But my friends call me Josh. You can call me Josh. So with that, I feel like I've covered a lot of my bases of, you know, the past and now the present. And in the future, hopefully I'll be doing a lot more shows, doing a lot more traveling. But like I said, it doesn't come easy. It takes a lot of work. So I want to thank Miss Lark and thank all of you for taking the time to listen to me. Hopefully you can walk away with something today. And hopefully this won't be the last time we'll talk. All right, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Josh, for being so generous with your hard-earned wisdom and inspirational artwork and for sharing your advice with such humility. You are exactly the kind of artist and role model I am happy to share with my kiddos. If you enjoyed this new series and or would like to leave some love for Baghead, please like this video and leave him a comment below. If you enjoyed this new series, Artist Wise, let me know and subscribe to this channel. Happy day!